Uh, light the beam. The Kings <laughs> took care of business in game one against the defending champion Warriors Saturday night. Behind 38 points from Darren Fox in his playoff debut, Malik Monk poured in 32 off the bench as the Kings played in their first postseason game in 17 seasons in front of a wild atmosphere in Sacramento. Game twos tonight. Perk, how worried should the Warriors be about the Kings? They should be very worried. Very, very worried. And here's one thing that I think we all fail to realize, include myself, in, into actually watching this game happen the other night and listening to Mike Brown talk about, you know, they need to continue to push the pace. And I kept saying, what are you talking about, Mike? And he kept saying, we need to keep pushing the pace. We need to keep playing faster. And he's no dummy. And this is why he won Coach of the Year. It's for the simple fact that we have to realize that the Warriors have dominated over the last decade, multiple finals, winning multiple championships, going back to back, guys playing, you know, for the Olympic team, playing nonstop, when you have a short turnaround every single season. And at some point, you get tired. Your legs get tired. Like, we got to expect that out of Clay, Steph, and Draymond. These guys been punching in the clock. So when I'm looking at these young bucks like, you know, De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk and Harrison Barnes, who's not young, but he's still in his prime, and I'm looking at Trey Lyles, and I'm watching these guys push the pace and the tempo. They're doing it for a reason. The one reason is they know that's to the, that, their advantage, and they know they got to beat those old guys or old heads considerably down the court. But two, also, they don't want to give them opportunity to get their defense set. So when I'm looking at the, uh, the Kings, and I look at what Sabonis did the other night, I know he struggled for us finishing around the basket. That won't happen again, but he was a monster on the boards. Keegan Murray, he didn't play well. Herder didn't shoot the ball well, and they still found a way on the back of my Texas boy, De'Aaron Fox, to pull that game out. The Warriors should be very worried. Kendra Perkins, we all owe an apology to the Sacramento Kings. Let me tell you something, man. I watched them the other night. I said, oh, my Lord. This brother, De De'Aaron Fox, <laughs> he is just something special. This brother's something special, man. Yeah. This brother's something special. I mean, I'm watching him. And I'm not talking about just the poison leadership because obviously he was the he, you know he was the leader in clutch points throughout this season. We know who he is. You know, so we know what he's capable of. But I'm talking about the speed and the quickness. The speed and the quickness. See, quickness is when you know that first step. Speed is just open court. You blow by people. He's got both. He's got both. Yeah. Can handle, can finish at the rim, can elevate athleticism. This is the only argument I keep saying this to everybody. It's the only argument, the legit argument I've ever gotten into with Irvin Magic Johnson. Because I watched him bust Lonzo Ball's living you know what in the NCAA tournament. And we wish Lonzo Ball well. Hopefully he gets back healthy. Because I think Chicago would be a better team differently, obviously, with them than without him. But he ain't De'Aaron Fox. This brother is something special. And coming into this game, I'm like, you got to match Steph Curry. Well, damn it, he eclipsed Steph Curry. He, he eclipsed him. And he's covering him in the first quarter. He's covering him in the fourth quarter. J.R. Smith did that stuff on Instagram. So everybody was talking about how Matthew Delavadova nearly died covering Steph Curry and stuff like that, living for oxygen mm -hmm. and everything. Because you got to run around. And, and, and De'Aaron Fox validated that. He said, that it's, it's true. It's absolutely true. But in the end, Steph got to guard him, too, and Clay got to guard him. All of them got to guard This brother is something special with a J, with a handle, with athleticism to finish at the rim. And you cannot stay in front of him. He can go by anybody anytime he wants to. And I got to give major love, major love to Malik Monk. This brother coming off the bench, dropping 32. He was a Laker last year. I'm like, why the hell he leave? Well, obviously, he was teammates with De'Aaron Fox at Kentucky. You see, he wanted to be with his boy. You understand why. Mike Brown has unleashed them. Keegan Murray can play. Harrison Barnes with the big time three. He's a champion from 2015. He knows what it takes. I'm just looking at them. I've got some questions about their size. 
But I got to tell you, if you cannot slow them down, they can beat anybody. They can beat anybody. Now, I picked Golden State to win this series in seven games. And you're going to have to see. You have to show me you could take out Steph and Clay. Okay? I'm not deviating from that. But I just said to myself, my God, this team is something special. De'Aaron Fox. I'm thinking John Morant. I'm thinking Derrick Rose in his prime. This is what I'm seeing, Big Perk. This is what I'm seeing when I watch this kid. And I'm like, my God, he is something special. He is something special. And that home crowd, that might be the best home crowd in the NBA right now with the beam and everything. It was electric. I was mad because I I love doing countdown. But, damn it, I wish I didn't have to do countdown because I would have been there. I would have been there this Saturday night for that game. Make no mistake about it. And I'm just telling you, it's going to take greatness from the Golden State Warriors in order to beat these brothers. And by that, I don't just mean the players. I mean Steve Kerr, just like he made adjustments in the finals against Boston. He's going to have to make adjustments in this series. He's going to have to get some young thoroughbreds with some fresh legs out there to spell for some of those older brothers because you can't stay out there and play them for 35-plus minutes against these greyhounds. Sacramento, Sacramento, size is an issue. So bonus has to play big. But with everything else they have, Mm -hmm. they can beat anybody. All right, quick take. Stephen A. Giannis Antetokounmpo exited his first-round matchup game one versus the Heat with a lower back contusion. Coach Mike Budenholzer said after the game one, that the 13-point loss, that Giannis had an x-ray that came back clear that he'll be monitored, and they'll see how he wakes up today. So, S.A., if Giannis misses time, how big of a deal is this? I think it's a big deal because I think they need him to beat the Miami Heat. That's not to say that Milwaukee can't beat Miami without him because we never know which Miami Heat is a team is going to show up. Uh, they were relatively porous offensively this year. They just lost Tyler Hero out four to six weeks uh, with his broken hand. So when you look at all of those things, uh, they clearly could beat Miami, but there is always the fact that that is Jimmy Butler, who is that dude, playoff Jimmy. And they'll need Giannis, in my opinion, to pull it off. He's a rough rider. I don't see this being a long-term issue. Giannis will be back eventually, whether or not game two or not remains to be seen. But he will be back, and I still believe the Milwaukee Bucks will win this series. All right, staying with the top teams in the East here. Jalen Brown had 29 points, 12 rebounds, and the Celtics capitalized on a woeful shooting performance by the Atlanta Hawks to hold on for a 112-99 victory in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference first-round matchup on Saturday. And they held up a late rally by the Hawks. Jason Tatum scored 25 points, 21 in the first half. Derek White finished with 25 points, 11 rebounds for Boston, which hosts Game 2 on Tuesday. Saturday afternoon, James Harden and the Sixers opened up this year's playoff against Harden's old team, the Nets, and couldn't have looked more comfortable, finishing with 23 points, 13 assists in 36 minutes in what became a 121-101 Philadelphia win to begin what the Sixers hope will be an extended run through this year's playoffs. Hendrick Perkins, what was the more impressive Game 1 win, sir? Well, we know what we know what uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum go give us. Molly, they've been the best, if not one of the best, if not the best duos in the game. The Celtics have a deep roster. They went to the finals last year. I expect them to spank the Hawks the way that they did, and I expect them to beat the Hawks in great fashion in the series. But when it comes down to the 76ers, and I get it, they're playing the Nets without a bona fide quote unquote superstar. But they got some hell of a players over there. Mikael Bridges be balling out. Dent Whitty could put on some uh, spectacular performances at times. Cam Johnson, we know what he's capable of doing. But when I look at the 76ers, it's not me looking at Doc Rivers or looking at Joel Embiid and, hell, even Tyrese Maxey at this point. Anytime you see James Harden look healthy, and James Harden go out there and ball out going 7 for 13 from the 3 with 13 dimes, that's all you need if you're the Philadelphia 76ers. You should feel real comfortable wiggling your toes just like this in that locker room if James Harden is going to come out there and perform the way that he did the other night because you don't need nothing more, nothing less. And I believe that 23 and 13, 20 and 10 a night in the postseason – 
is just what he's going to give the Philadelphia 76ers, and that's going to be enough for them to actually complete and accomplish the deep run that they want to accomplish this season, and that's at least getting to the conference finals. Well, I respectfully disagree with the, your point on this particular press uh, question as it pertains to the more impressive game one win, number one, because they were playing the Brooklyn Nets and, and they looked like little, like literally like toys standing next to Joel Embiid. I mean, you, you just see the massive mammoth of a man that he is and you were just looking for Claxton. Like, is he even on the floor? You, I mean, he, Embiid looks so big compared to him and stuff like that. He looked like me standing next to you. That's number one. Number two, uh, Mikael Bridges <laughs> was balling in the first half, had 23 points in the first half, was having his way with the Philadelphia 76ers. I didn't think that was that impressive. Number three, James Harden did end up shooting like 8 for 21 for the field. Seven three-pointers. Give him mad credit for that. But here's where I would tell you it's Boston for me. Boston is the reigning defending Eastern Conference champions who feel like they blew a prime opportunity to win the championship to Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors last year. They had them on the ropes. Uh, particularly going going into game five, and then they weren't able to close the deal and obviously got closed out in game six on their own home court. We've been talking about Boston and Milwaukee all year long going back and forth, and Boston opened the playoffs going up 30 at half, at the half against Atlanta. They seem to be sending a message to everybody. We're still here, and we're coming. We're on a mission. Now is really time to rev this thing up, Derek White, giving you 24. Didn't need that much from Malcolm Brockton. You saw what Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum did. Robert Williams the third, perfect from the field, hitting all six of his shots. A third time in his career as a Boston Celtics in a postseason, registering a perfect, a perfect game from the field. That, that, that's a rarity. We get all of that. At the end of the day, when you look at the Boston Celtics, what are you expecting to see? You're expecting to see exactly what they showed you, okay? You wanted to see them come out and send the message, we're still those dudes, and we're coming to finish the job this time around, and I thought they did that. Well, why was it impressive if we expected to see that? Because what I'm saying, impressive? Because, I, what, I, because oh, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that as a champion with the Boston Celtics, you have expectations. Rondo came on the show last week. What did he say? We ain't trying to hang conference championship banners. We after, we after it all. This is what we do, and we're not having it. And what I'm saying is they're sending a message. We ain't having it. We coming for everybody. We are going to annihilate the competition. And what you saw James Harden do, it's, it's going to be a different animal when he goes against us. That's the message. I saw the 76ers win a game. I saw Boston send a message. There's a difference, in my opinion. Well, well I mean, we, ha we have all been on here asking about James Harden arriving in the postseason, even though you and I believe that it's some false narratives out there for yep. some of his performances in his past in the postseason. But what yep. I'm saying is, is this. If Philly even stand a chance, S.A., to competing with the Celtics, in the second round, because that's going to be the matchup. It's going to be what version of James Harden you want to get. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.